What happens when you power on a computer? Well, to find out, let's explore some of the internal hardware components involved. Let's start with the central processing unit. Now the CPU is a large chip that sits on the motherboard and its job is basically to read instructions and data from the computer's memory, process that data and then write back to the memory. It's the brain of the computer, it controls everything. Now I recently rebuilt my computer, so here's some footage of me fitting my new CPU onto the motherboard. As you can see, there's a clamp that holds the CPU in place. Now for the techies out there, this CPU is an AMD Ryzen 5 3600X. Intel, of course, is the other big company that makes CPUs. Now let's talk about RAM, or Random Access Memory. RAM is the computer's working memory. It stores data while the computer is running. So let's say that you want to watch a video file on your computer. You double click the video, the video player application will be loaded into RAM and the video file itself will be loaded into RAM. So the computer is able to read from the RAM and write to the RAM. Now that's important. The computer is able to add, change and delete the data held in the RAM. Now the size of RAM is measured in gigabytes. Your average smartphone would have between one and eight gigabytes of RAM, but a high-end gaming PC might have 16, 32, or even 64 gigabytes of RAM. If you need to have lots of applications running at the same time, or you're working with very large files, like I do when I'm editing videos, then having plenty of RAM in your computer will keep it running nice and smoothly. Here's me fitting the RAM into the DIMM slots on my motherboard. If you're interested, this is 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. And I'm actually planning to double this up to 32. You need plenty of RAM for video editing. Now RAM is also volatile. Now this means that the data is only held in the RAM while the power is switched on. As soon as you switch off your computer, anything held in the RAM is lost. And now let's talk about ROM or read only memory. As the name suggests, the computer is only able to read from this memory. It cannot write to it. Now the ROM is a tiny little chip that comes pre-installed on your motherboard. It's actually soldered on. It's not a component that you can remove and replace. Now the ROM chip contains special instructions telling your computer how to start up. It's a very important component. It is actually possible to overwrite or flash new data onto the ROM chip, but it's not recommended because if you don't know what you're doing, you could easily break your computer. Now I've opened up my PC here so that we can look at the ROM chip on the motherboard. Notice by the way the CPU now has a huge fan mounted to it. It gets very hot, it needs to be kept cool. And that chip right there is the ROM. Like the RAM, the ROM chip is extremely fast. But unlike RAM, it doesn't have gigabytes of storage. In fact, a ROM chip only has a few small megabytes. But the data that's on the ROM chip is non-volatile. This means that even when the power is turned off, the data remains in the ROM. Now the ROM is where the basic input-output system is stored, the BIOS. It's the BIOS that has that special set of instructions telling your computer what to do when you power it on, how to start up. So let's take a look at the startup sequence and see how it all works. So you power on your PC and it needs instructions. What do I do? How do I start up? Well, the first instruction that the CPU receives is for something called a power on self test. This instruction is fetched from the ROM and it's then stored in the RAM. Now the power on self test basically checks to make sure that all the hardware and devices are working properly. Once it's confirmed that everything is fine, it then goes back to the ROM for its next instruction. The next instruction is to load the operating system. This instruction also fetched from the ROM from the BIOS and again stored in the RAM so the operating system is fetched from the hard drive and loaded into the RAM. Windows 10, Mac OS, iOS, Android, whichever operating system it is. At this point, the operating system takes over. The BIOS has done its job of starting up the computer and it transfers full control to the operating system. So there you go, that's the basic startup sequence for a computer. You power on, it gets an instruction from the ROM to run some tests, 
it then gets another instruction from the ROM to load the operating system, and then the operating system takes over. Now let's run through a quick summary of the hardware devices that we've looked at. So the CPU, the central processing unit, it's the brain of the computer. It reads data and instructions from the RAM, processes data and writes it back to the RAM. RAM, which is random access memory, the computer can read and write to the RAM. It's very fast, we measure the size in gigabytes, and it's volatile. Remember, data is lost when the power is switched off. And finally, ROM, read-only memory. ROM is read-only, it's also very fast, it contains the BIOS, the basic input-output system, and it's non-volatile. Another way of saying this is that the data is persistent. So you turn the power off and the BIOS is still on the ROM. So there you go. Now you know what happens when you press the power button on your computer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.